Hi, my name is Monica and I'm from cookie.com. I'm here to talk about the Animate Entry Pro widget. It allows you to add an animation to an object as it enters a page. It's super easy to use. All you have to do is apply one of the widget's indicators to the object as a tooltip. Let's take a look at the widget in action. I'm going to refresh this page. All the objects on the page have the widget applied to it, so just pay attention to how everything enters. So as you may have noticed, everything entered the page in a slightly different manner. And this is because the widget has a lot of different options for how you can add animations to an object. So let's go ahead and take a look at the widget options. We have gap and this refers to when the animated effects will be applied to the object. The value is based on the percentage of the object's height. So if the value is 400, then the object will be animated when there is 400% of the object's height or four times the height of the object between the top of the object and the bottom of the browser. So if we have this object that is 100 pixels high and we apply the 400% gap to it, the animated effect will take place when there is 400 pixels between the top of the object and the bottom of the browser. And this is because 100 times 4 is 400. Easing allows you to control the velocity of how your objects enter the page. Basically, you can choose if your animation is slower at the start or at the end. There are six different options to choose from. Then we have some default starting values. So every object that has a widget applied to it will be two seconds in duration and it will travel 100 pixels. Here you can set the default time of duration for the animation. A value of 2 is 2 seconds, a value of 5.5 .5 is 5.5 seconds. Here you can set the default distance, this is set to 100, and this is applied to anything that has a directional indicator applied to it, such as up, down, left, or right. Scale is the percentage of the object size that it will begin at. If the value is 77, then the object will start at 77% of its actual height. And finally, we have the default setting for rotation, which is currently 45 degrees. And this is applied if you have the rotate indicator applied to an object. Speaking of indicators, there's 14 different indicators that you can use. And these are used to apply the animated entries to the objects. So we have directional indicators, up, down, left, right. We also have scale, rotate, and opacity. We have time-based indicators. And then we have transform origin indicators, and that's basically where your animation starts from on the object. So you can choose to have it start from the object's top, bottom, right, or left. Now that we've covered all the options, let's go ahead and use the widget. You want to select your object, click on the hyperlinks text at the top, and then we're going to type our indicator name in the tooltip bar. I'm going to use right. And I'm not going to add a value because I want this to use the default value in here, which is set to 100. I'm going to go ahead and change the gap to 200. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to apply a value to right. I'm going to set it to 300 just so we can see the difference. And then I'm going to create another one and I'm going to set this to 500. And let's preview. So as you can see, this one came out from 300 pixels to the right. This one came out from 500 pixels. And all three of the animations had the same time applied to it. Because it was just using the default value for time, which is two seconds. So two indicators that I particularly like are time and delay. And when you're combining indicators, all you have to do is leave a space in between the indicator names. Time is cool because you can apply a specific time to each individual object. So I can keep my default time of two, but let's say I just want these three objects to have a time of five. And the cool thing about delay is that you can use it to have your animations appear in succession.
So if I leave this just at time five, and let's say I want this one to show up half a second after the first object, I would just put delay 0.5. And then let's have the third one apply half a second after the second one. So I'm just going to put delay one. And let me make sure my indicators are correct. Time five applied to all of them. Okay. Let's go ahead and preview. And you can, of course, add any of the other indicators to your tooltips. You have a lot of different options, but I'm just showing you some of the basics. Um, there are some additional things that you should know. Sometimes a widget may be unwillingly applied to an object. Let's say that you have an object, and you have the tooltip name lineup applied to it. We don't want this object to be animated, we want it to be completely static, but since up is one of the indicators for the animated entry pro widget, and it's also inside your graphic style name lineup, the animated entry pro widget may accidentally be applied to it. So to prevent this from happening, all you have to do is type in non into the object's tooltip and the widget won't be applied to any object you want to remain static. One restriction to take note of is that the widget won't work properly if you have the widget applied to multiple overlapping objects. Your indicators won't be applied properly because Mu structures overlapping objects into one unit, and unfortunately, there's not really a way to work around this. Well, that's all that I have for you. If you have any questions or if you want to learn more, you can always check out the documentation for full details about the widget. As always, thank you for watching.